Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, it's a Thursday. We're back with another, what do we call it, Michael? Creative process. Creative process, there you go. We, we didn't do it last Thursday. We were doing a different video instead. Uh, but I'm back from Blackpool and we are doing another creative process this week. For those of you that don't know what it is, the idea is very, very simple. I have two bowls and in one bowl, I have stuff that magicians might use. Uh, and, and honestly, it's becoming more and more random by the second. Uh, we've got condoms in there. We've got rubber dildos in there. We've got barbed wire in there. Honestly, you guys, whenever anybody puts anything in the comments, we add it to the bowl. And then in the other bowl, we have stuff that um, a magician might do, effects that should be achieved. It could be a penetration. It could be a superpower we've had in the past. We've had mind reading, prediction, all this different type of stuff. And then the idea is I have to sit here and try and come up with a way of taking the two props from the one bowl and the one effect from the other bowl and coming up with a way of doing it. And we've we've had some success, haven't we, Michael? We've yeah. had um, an any card at any number with Smarties. That was kind <laughs> of a weird one. Uh, we had nuts and bolts and trying to recreate superpowers. It's a lot of different stuff that we've had. We're going to do it again this week. Now, just so you know, the one rule is I don't just have to use the stuff that comes out of the bowl. So I'm not just stuck with two things. I am allowed to incorporate other things in as well, but I have to use the two items that come out of the bowl. So with that being said, I've just realized, Michael, we haven't got our bowls. So with that being said, we're going to stop the video for a second because we're organized here at Magic TV. <laughs> We're going to go and get the bowls, and we're going to bring them back, and we're going to do this thing. So, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with my bowls. So, let's do this. Right, what are we creating this week, Michael? We are creating a transposition. Okay, that's quite a cool a normal one. one. Quite a nice yeah. one, that one is. We've not had a transposition before, have we? Don't think so, no. Yeah, okay. Transposition, and what are we transposing? We are... Transposing playing cards. This is the first time I think this has come up again because we throw them back in the. Uh, did we have playing cards or was it? Um, did we not? It was file cards, wasn't it? There was. Uh, I think we've had playing cards before. Have you we? did a Svengali deck. Did I for the bananas? Well, I tell you, I'll let you choose. Are we okay to do them again? I think it's okay to do them again if it comes out again, right? Yeah. Don't if use it comes a Svengali out, deck, don't use a Svengali deck. Okay. Uh, playing cards and playing cards and can't open it. a torch, a torch. <laughs> playing cards, a transposition. If it was just playing cards and a transposition, I've got like 400 different <laughs> ways of doing that immediately. Playing cards, transposition, but we have to include the torch. Okay. You know what we need? A torch? We need a torch. Uh, I tell <laughs> you what, look. You go to the uh, petrol station. They sell yeah. those little small torches there, you know, the ones that you yeah. get in petrol stations. Go get a couple of those, just in case yeah, it might be useful. With a transposition, it's always useful to have two of an object. So go get two torches, make sure they've got batteries in them. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and I've got packs of cards, and then we'll reconvene here. And we'll try and figure out what we're going to do with this. Okay, yeah. so Michael bought me a couple of torches. I would ideally like them slightly smaller. <laughs> they, <laughs> they were like easier they... to palm. <laughs> that would have been easier, you know. Surely they had little key ring ones, no? No, that was the only thing they this had torches. This is all we had. They look like giant lipsticks. They do look like giant lipsticks. Do they? Oh. There go. Do, they both, do they both work? Yes, they do. Right, okay. Okay. So a transposition between a torch... Let's put that one over there for a minute. A transposition between a torch and a playing card. So the first thing that springs instantly to mind is having a card picked and signed. Can you pass me that Sharpie there? Thank you. Not with my lottery prediction on it. <laughs> um, a transposition between um, a card. Okay, so the first thing that springs instantly to mind is having someone sign a card. Let's just say they've signed a card. Having it folded up. Like so. And doing like almost like a transposition 
that would probably be quite difficult to do. Like if you put the torch here and the card here and you did this and now the torch is here and the card's here. That looked rubbish. Did, didn't it? It's, yeah. Like, did that look okay, the vanish? Yeah. Did the vanish look okay? But then you, that looks obvious, doesn't yeah. it? Take, take, taking it from the other hand, it's like you just open that hand. You wouldn't do. And she had a second folded up card. So if you had a second folded up card, because if they're folded inwards, that might be a little bit better. So they, so this is this is the gimmick. They're not aware of this. You've got this Joker here. So you've got the Joker that they've signed. And you say, right, I'm going to show you something with a torch and joker. Watch. And you put the, uh, you put the, you put the, uh... okay, no, <laughs> hang on. So, uh, help me, Michael. Uh, that, that would be in finger palm here. Okay, so they've signed the card. They've signed the, um, They've signed the Joker. This is harder than you'd think. So they sign the Joker, and you do the uh, you do the you do the switch here. So they think that's the Joker, but it's actually a dummy card. The Joker's here. So you could do this and do this. Yep, that looks a lot better. Did that look better yeah. having having that duplicate card? So that would be this would be in finger palm. The torch would be here, and it'd be a case of so you've signed your card. Okay, perfect. I'm going to take that card and fold it up in half. Then I'm going to put it fold it up in half again. So we have the uh, we have the card, and also we have the torch. And you do the shuttle pass for the gimmick. So you uh, say the gimmick, the duplicate folded up card. So you say, look, keep an eye on the card, but also keep an eye on the torch. I'll put the card there. I'll put the torch there. So they genuinely think that's the card and the torch. This is actually quite nice to flip stick. It's quite a good shape for a flip stick. So you could say, look. I'm going to put the torch here over here like this. That looks like the torch went over there, right? Yeah. And I've actually got it here. So I'm going to put the torch over here like this. I'm going to put the card over here like this. If I squeeze, now we've got the torch over there and the card's over there. Unfold it, have a look. And this just ends up in finger palm over there. That does actually look good. Does that look okay? Yeah. I love how you said, that does actually look good. I know. Good. Something Craig like, has made does look good. I know, like, what the fuck? <laughs> So full speed, it'd be like this. Look, I've got a, uh, I've got a, uh, I've got a card uh, that you've signed, and I've got a torch. Watch the card. I'm going to take the card. I'm going to fold it up. Okay, so you've got to keep an eye on the card, but you've also got to keep an eye on the torch. Now the idea is that the torch actually goes over here in this hand. The card actually goes over here in this hand. Remember, the card's over here, right? No, that's actually the torch. The card's over here. Did you miss that? Let's do that again. Look, I'm going to put the card over there. Remember, the torch goes over here. So remember, the torch is here. What's over here? You can see it, right? It's the card. Until I do that, when I do that, it turns into the the, uh, the torch and the, uh, the card's over there. I mean, technically... You've done it already? I've done it. <laughs> Join us next week on the creative process. <laughs> I think it's missing something, though. Yeah. I don't know what, but I think it's missing something. I also think that nobody would do that. I think that's quite angly. I think it's quite, you know, it's quite... Well, so the this, torch just makes no sense to It me. makes no <laughs> fucking sense at all. That's a good point, Michael. This torch makes no sense. So the first thing we have to do is justify the torch. Right, okay. So why do we have a torch with us? Because the bowl said to. <laughs> the bowl said so. Uh, why do we have a torch with us? We have a torch with us because that's the source of the magician's power. Back in the olden days, magicians used to use magic wands. But just like everything in life, we've adapted, we've improved, we've got better. And these days, a lot of magicians are 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 by are having magic wands built into. A pocket torch, because that way, when we pull it out, people aren't going to think we're holding a magic wand, whilst the actual fact we are. And to turn, when you turn on the torch, anything that the light touches, magic happens. Okay, yeah, that's a good drawing. Interesting to the torch. premise, yeah. right? Interesting premise. 
which means that the torch could be the reason for the two objects changing places. So could we do a standard transposition? Well, if you're going to do a standard transposition with playing cards, you need a duplicate card. So let me uh, grab a duplicate card here. This is not a real deck. If it is, why have I got two Jack of Hearts, two, two of Cups? What the hell is this deck? Oh, it's that one. Shit. I'll borrow that one. It's fine. Uh, there's so <laughs> many. How many gimmick decks are there in this office here? Too many. Just ridiculous amounts. Uh, and half of them, we don't even know what they do. <laughs> we need to sit down all day and just open up packs of cards and figure it out. Oh, great. So there's not even... There's not, not a ton of diamonds. Of course it's <laughs> just it make things so much easier, wouldn't it? Uh, let's use a seven of clubs. Is there a seven of clubs in here? Nope. Uh, uh, I saw a queen of clubs, so we're good. There's definitely a queen of clubs, Michael. Definitely a queen of clubs. We're sorted. So, a transposition. The easiest way to, use a transposi to do a transposition is to use a duplicate card. Because if you use a duplicate card, you can literally do a double turnover and you can show the eight of hearts and put it over there. Then you can do another double turnover and show the, uh, the queen of clubs and put it over there. And they've changed places. Two double lifts. Now, actually, on the net tricks, I actually had a way of doing a transposition that doesn't actually use any duplicates, which is to do, I mean, it's a multi-phase routine, but one of the phases, you do a triple turnover and you put that card sticking out the deck, sort of angled like that, and then you do a single turnover to show the next card, which is the uh, the 10. You do a, uh, a shape shifter and you show the transposition, and then you push that double forward, so you've got the 10 underneath it. You take this card out, and you kind of pull that back on the deck as you separate the double to show the 10. So the whole thing in full speed looks like this. It looks, look, I've got... Uh, I've got an ace of diamonds, right? I'm going to pop that ace of diamonds here, leave it sticking out the deck like that. And then I've got this card here, the uh, the jack of hearts. Now watch the jack of hearts. If I take it and flick it, it turns into the ace of diamonds. And if the ace of diamonds is here, well, this card actually has to be the jack of hearts. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, it's on the net tricks. Um, but I think freeze of use, we'll use, we'll use a duplicate. Okay, so if this is the use, if this torch is the is the source of all the magician's powers we could do a couple of uh forces and and so we could give them you could say let me get you do the presentation about this is actually a magic wand and you say look I'll, I'll show you what i mean you can operate the magic wand when you press the button magic happens don't press it too early because if you do crazy stuff is going to happen say stop for me stop okay it doesn't matter whether i see the card i'm allowed to see it what do we have here the eight of hearts that's great I'm going to pop that eight of hearts over here and we get somebody else say stop stop what have you got you've got the uh uh you've got the uh the, the queen okay i'm going to put that right there look shine it on that one shine it on that one and they change places that works yeah, that works but i'm not really doing much with the torch no. the torch isn't playing a big role in the trick yeah that's the problem there we're not, but I mean, the rules aren't that it's got to play a big, I've just got to include a torch. Yeah. I'm including a torch. But do you think it should have a bigger role? But if you want it to be a, a good trick. Fuck off, Michael. <laughs> um, not just randomly have a torch. What about if the torch doesn't have any other use in it? And we're using the torch to do a multi-phase transposition routine with playing cards... But then there's a kicker at the end that does involve the torch. Yeah. But we, we make them think that the only purpose of the torch is to affect the transposition. So that when that kicker happens, they don't see it coming. Yeah. So. For example... Okay, so we explain that. So we do a two phase routine with the torch, with the playing card. The, so the, 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 the transposition routine is being done as a setup for, 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 for the kicker finish. So we'd start off by 
giving them the torch and saying that's the source of the magician's power. Do me a favor, say stop. And if it's going to be two phases, we can't do the two double lifts. If we if we if we take the first one and we show it and we say that's that's a that's a, an eight, we'll put that one down there. But we need another card as well. Do me a favor, say stop, stop. We'll have a look at this one. What have we got here? We've got the uh, the queen. And you have them shine the light on the queen. You have them shine the light on the eight. And this is a Jay Sankey sequence. You go watch. One, two, three. There's the eight. There's the queen. So you do an Erden age change, which is quite nice. But because this is a Jay Sankey concept, because of that Erden age change, you can now do a double turnover and put those two cards down there, but they're both queens. So now you can mix them up like this and you can say to the spectator, put your hand on one of them, which they do. And you say, okay, so I've got the queen. What do you have? And they say the eight. And you go shine the torch. So they shine the torch and you say, it takes three seconds. One, two, three. You do a shape shifter to show the eight. And you say, that's the eight. Have a look under your hand. You've got the queen. Boom. Really nice. Yeah. Two phase routine. But they aren't going to think the torch is being done for anything else. Now... We say to them, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. We say to them, what happens if you've only got one card? What will happen if you use the torch and you've only got one card? I've got it, I've got it. Stay. Stay. So take one of those fives, yeah? Is this where you thought I was going? Yeah. Yeah. Take one of the fives and fold it up and put it in the torch. It's almost like it's made for a magic trick. Yeah. That. <laughs> uh, damn it. Does it not screw on? Well, it's only got one. Oh, it does. Okay. So. That's in your back pocket. That torch is in your back pocket. That torch is in your front pocket. Sidetrack for a minute. <laughs> we don't need that. Right, there we go. Um, how can, right, assuming that I've got three batteries, I know how I'm going to get three batteries in palm. I'll go through that in a minute. But assuming I've got three batteries in palm, how would I switch deck of car a card for three batteries? What about if they're in this hand? How would you switch a, back a card for three batteries? Well, it's going to be folded up inside the thing. Where's the thing? Right, okay, let me just get a practice pack with it. Right, okay. Mm. That's there. That looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, see, so you wouldn't necessarily have to have the three batteries. No, but I think it's cool. Yeah. No, you could just have one. They don't know how many batteries yeah. are in there, but I think it'd be quite cool with that. Yeah. Um, okay. Got it. Not really, but let's try it. Right, okay. So, um, we got... We've got the two queens and the five on top of the deck. We've got these three batteries in our left-hand pocket. 
Where's the deck gone? Oh, here, right, okay. So, let's start again, right, okay. We've got this deck here with the three cards on top of it, yes. We've got three batteries in our left-hand pocket. We have the torch in the back pocket or somewhere where we can switch it. Back pocket seems ideal, but we'll get to that in a minute. We've got this in the right-hand pocket. Don't worry about that for now. So, you open up the deck, yeah? And you start off by bringing out the torch and you give it to the person and you say, this is a, uh, uh, this is a magic wand, but for the modern magician. You, you go through that whole presentation. You give them this and you do a, uh, uh, a shuffle, keeping those top three cards on top. So then you do any sort of uh, force that you want to. And you do a look at me with my fancy strike double. You do the uh, you do the double lift to show the uh, the five of hearts. Deal it down onto the table. You then um, you then have somebody else pick a card. Uh, say stop, stop. And again, you do a fancy little strike double to show the queen. And you say, look, I'm going to show you magic. Do me a favor, shine the light on the queen. Shine the light on the five. This is going to be amazing. Watch this. One, two, three. You've got the five, and that's the queen. That's a really good first phase, right? You then say, look, I tell you what, I'm not meant to repeat a trick, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to mix up the queen and the five. Uh, put your hand on one of them. So they put the hand on one of them, and you say, great, do me a favor, shine the light on the, uh, on the queen. So they shine the light on the queen, and as they do, you, uh, you do this, you do the change, and you deal that down to the table, and uh, you deal that down to the table. Yeah, you deal that down to the table. And, and, and you say, you're not going to believe this. If the five is there, that queen's been under your hand the whole time. You're not going to believe this. And, and this is, I think, the moment where you would switch the torch. Because their focus is that they've had their hand on what they think is the five from the very beginning. So their focus is right there. And you can just stay put, take a step back out of frame and you can switch for this one here. And they're not going to realize it's going completely on the offbeat. The focus is right there. And that's where they think it is, right? And yeah. then you just put this here. Nobody would notice anything at that point. And then you say, because I've got to get these three out of finger palm, into finger palm. But I think the way to do that is to say, I tell you what, what would happen, you know, we've shown you, uh, no, you can't do that because the way those are, um, we've shown you what happens when we shine the light and we've got two cards, what happens when you've only got one card? Well, I'll get rid of one card, I'll get rid of the whole deck, we'll just use one card. Then you have an excuse to put it away. Now I have an excuse to put it in the pocket. And I say to them, can you fold that card in half and in half again? You know what, if they're folding up the card, that's probably the best time to switch the torch as well. Because I could have this in my right hand pocket. I could have this in my right hand pocket. So I haven't switched it at that point. I then say, hey, what would happen? Blah, 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 blah. I tell you what, we'll just use one. Fold it in half as neatly as you can for me. I then take a step back. All attention is on them doing that. I put the box away in my pocket. I finger palm these. This just switches in my back pocket. Nobody's seen anything. And then that goes down onto the table. So they've then folded up this card. And you say, look, I tell you what, we'll try it with just one card. I'll put it in my hand. I want to shine a light at my hand. Now, this is here in finger palm, but like everyone's attention's here and they'll go and press the button and it won't work. And when they say it won't work, what's really cool is actually the kicker here is another transposition. Yeah. Which, which is really cool because <laughs> the whole thing was meant to be about transpositions. Everyone's attention's here. You open up your hand and you've got three batteries there now. And they'd be like, what the fuck? That'd be a really cool moment. That would be. Yeah, and you go, well, you've got three batteries. Well, the batteries must have been in the torch. Now you could, you've got all the time in the world to ditch this. And you go, well, hang on a minute. That could only mean one thing. Have a look inside the, the, uh, the, uh, the torch. And, you know, they open up the torch. And when they do, they see a folded up card in there instead of the batteries. And when they unfold it, it's their five. That's really good. That's actually yeah, really, really nice, good. isn't it? That's cool. Um, and I love that the, the kicker is... I mean, the only negative... Negative? 
is that it's not a signed five, but I don't think that's too much of an issue. Do no, you know? I don't think that's a problem at all. But structurally, that that works. Yeah, I really like it. I really like that. That that works really well. Justifies everything. It is the sort of routine you'd have to stand up for. We couldn't sit down for this yeah. one because there's a few times that you, well, there's a couple of times that you have to go into your pocket. But I think we try and grab somebody from the office, film it over there where we film some of the metric stuff, standing up. And we get uh, an opinion from somebody. What do you reckon? Yeah, sounds good. Is there, is there any holes in that? I, I don't think that. I, I, think I really like it. Yeah, it's structurally solid. that makes sense, doesn't it? It's yeah. like three phase routine, the end, and it also gives the torch a reason. Yeah. You know, the torch has a reason, a, par a presentational reason, but the torch then becomes part of the finale of the routine as well, which yeah. I think is quite cool. Okay, let's go get Jack or Katie, whoever's free, and we'll we'll do this. How are you doing, Jack? I hear the word torch and I get nervous. I don't worry about it. It's all good. How you doing, man? You okay? I was still now. Well, there's a couple of things that we need for this. The first thing is a deck of cards. Yeah. Now, when you think of a magician, you think of a pack of cards, but traditionally, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of a magician? Dynamo. Dynamo. No, the sort of thing that a magician would carry with them. Oh, a wand. A magic wand, right? For years, the magic wand has been symbolic of the magician's power. Yeah. The thing is, and what a lot of people don't realise, is uh, uh, magic wands are a little bit old hat now. A lot of people don't use magic wands. Just like with everything in, in life, magic has evolved, it's progressed. And now, instead of magic wands, most magicians carry a magic torch. It's concerning. Now this, Jack, is a magic torch. This is the source of my power. You know, like in the olden days, a magician would wave a wand over his hand to make a ball disappear and appear underneath the cup. Yeah. These days, all I have to do is turn the torch on, shine the light at whatever I want to make uh, magic happen to, and magic will happen. Right. Would you like me to show you? In fact, Jack, you are going to be in charge of the torch. You can have my power temporarily. You don't get it forever. I need it back. But when you press the button... Magic happens. Don't press the button until I tell you to, Jack. Okay. So, as well as the torch, we have a pack of 52 playing cards. Say it with me, Jack. 52 cards. 52 possibilities. Thank you very much. We should have that printed as a t-shirt. Now, we're going to start off, Chuck, by having you pick a card. It doesn't matter whether I see it. I'm allowed to see it. So as I go through, just say stop. Stop. There, are you sure? <clears throat> yep. You can change your mind if you want to. Are you happy with that one? We've got the five of hearts. That's a good card, Jack. We're going to put the five of hearts... Right there. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, Jack, we're going to do this again. So as I cut through the cards like this, anytime you want to, just say stop. Oh. I was just about to drop that one down. Do you want that one down? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. So as well as the five of hearts, we've got this one here as well, the queen of clubs. That's actually quite cool because the queen and the five, they contrast with each other quite nicely. You've got to keep one eye on the five, keep one eye on the queen, keep one eye on me. You're going to need an extra eye. I think I should go. You can share. Now watch this, this is where the magic would happen. This is normally when a magician would pull out a magic wand, wave it over, but we're gonna use the torch. Do me a favor, Jack, press the button, shine the torch over that card, shine the torch right there over the queen, switch the torch off, too much magic we don't want. And if I just take that queen after you've shined the light on it and rub it, it turns into the what? five, the queen's over there, they change places. Uh, da, da, da. It's, it's to do with the torch that you're holding in your hand, Jack, that's how it happens. Now, I'm going to do it again for you because you might have missed it, right? There's a rule in magic, never repeat a trick. I'm going to do it again, but this time you know exactly what's going to happen. Jack, we've got a five, we've got a queen. Yeah. I'm going to mix them up so you don't know which one's where. We're going to mix them up like this, okay? Give them a really good mix-up. And what I want you to do is you're going to put your hand down on one of those cards. It's up to you which one. That one right there. Yeah. You've still got the torch in the other hand, right? So I'll take this card, the one you elected not to use, the queen, which means you've got the five. Take the torch, switch it on, Jack. Shine the torch at the queen. Very good. Now at your hand, Jack. Don't do it too long. You might turn into a frog. That's it. Switch it off. All I have to do is just wait a second. Watch the queen. One, two, three. That's when it changes again, you see. Now there's the five. You're not going to believe this, Jack. Turn it over. Have a look underneath your hand. You've got the queen. The queen. You see, that's what I mean. Now people turn around to me and they say, "Craig," because that's, that's my name. Funny. They say, "Craig, uh, what happens?" Yeah, I mean, obviously, you were using the torch to. Uh, I'm giving torch back for a second. Let me explain. Uh, people say, "Well, you were using the torch and you were shining it over two cards, and that made the two cards change places." What happens if I just use one of those cards? 
Well, I'll show you, Jack. We'll get rid of the queen. We'll just use the five that you chose. And Jack, what I want you to do, we're going to put the deck away. Can you take me, do me a favor and take that five and fold it face inwards exactly in half? Neatness counts. That would be amazeballs. If you could do that, that would be fantastic. That's great. And then, uh, and then when you've done that, open it up. And I also want you to fold it lengthways. You can open it up and fold it that way as well, if that's okay. Yeah. That's great. And remember, you could have picked any card you wanted to, didn't you? Yeah. So by now taking it and folding it again, uh, and again, you're going to have folded that card, in essence, into quarters. Now, Jack, when you shine a light on just one card, the most amazing thing happens ever, but only if you've got a magic torch. Jack, pick up the torch for me if you can, please. That'd be great. Don't switch it on until I say, remember, you switch it on too early, magic will happen. It's no good. Watch this. This is going to be incredible. Jack, shine the light on the hand. There you go. Now, shine. No, Jack, shine the light on the hand. Jack, shine the light I'm on the hand. I'm trying. No, Jack, shine the light at the hand. The battery's dead. No, it was working a second. Shine the light at the torch. I'm trying. Is it not working? No. Oh, no. I told you earlier, don't shine the light too long. Do you know why? Trying to turn the batteries. Crazy stuff happens. Do you know what's happened to your five, Jack? Do you know hurt. what's happened to the five of hearts when you do that, Jack? It's still hurt. Well, it breaks the torch. Oh, no. It breaks the magic torch. Do you know what happens when you break the magic torch, Jack? The universe implodes? No. The five of hearts turns into some batteries, Jack. What? What? And the reason the five of tarts turns into some batteries is because these were the batteries that made the magic torch work. Jack, at the end, you can see where you can unscrew to get to the batteries. Unscrew it. There you go. What's inside there now instead of the batteries, Jack? Have a look. What the fuck? Is that a card? That is a card. What was your card again, Jack? Five of hearts. Just like you folded it. Unfold it, Jack. What the actual living... <laughs> that... Is your five of hearts, and that's that's how magic torch works, Jack. I don't get it, but you don't need to get it. There's nothing to get. That's it. You get a magic torch. Magic happens. That's all you need to know. There you go. I think that was very successful. What do you reckon, Michael? Yeah, that really, really well. I actually think that's probably the best one that we've come up with so far in these creativity sessions. Hundred percent. Yeah, I think it's super commercial. I love that you've got a reason for introducing the torch. Um, that one. I know you've got a re I love that you've got a reason for introducing the torch, but then at the end, you, you, Jack just didn't see that coming. Like he's no. seen so much magic. I actually asked him the question, do you know what happens, Jack? Do you know what happens to the torch? He had no idea. Even when he saw the batteries, I don't think he knew that the card was going to be in there. <laughs> and it kind of bugs me a little bit that the card's not signed, but I don't think it's too much of an issue. I don't think most people would have an issue with that at all. I don't think they would at all, no. I mean, if you wanted to have it signed, you could maybe gimmick the uh, the torch so that it's almost like a caps card in box style thing. And you could, like, you know, get some thread and tape this in and pretend to tip it out. But I think that ruins the cleanliness of it. Yeah. I like the fact that they unscrew the torch, they open it up. And I think that... Uh, sacrificing that moment to have it signed I think isn't isn't worth it so I quite I quite like the fact that it's uh it's not signed because it makes it really clean and it's also and like you said I mean I I love the fact that there were three batteries there but if you wanted to make it a bit easier for yourself you don't need three batteries you could just do it with one battery you could just have one battery because this is just a really simple shuttle pass to be honest with one battery you could just do a uh maybe not like that I like that. With one battery, you could do some sort of spellbound move with it and, and change it like that. But I actually quite like the delay. I quite like the fact that you've got that, you know, and they're not expecting it. I quite I quite like that moment. But uh, I, I think that's a win. I think that was a success. Yeah. I think it would have been very... I, I, I much prefer that to what we were trying to do at the beginning with transpositions with torches and stuff. Yeah. I think that this is a much better approach to the problem. Um, I'd do that. I would absolutely 100% do that. I think that's really cool. Um, nothing else to say. Try it out and let me know what you think, guys, in the comments. Uh, and don't forget, this is important. This is really interactive. If you've got something that you want to add into Michael's bowls, let me know in the comments <laughs> down below. It sounds terrible, doesn't it? If you want to put uh, uh, other props in there, let us know. Type them in the comments. Michael would write them out. 
uh, other other effects, write them out. We'll put them in there as well. And, uh, you know, we try to do these every single Thursday. Sometimes my schedule is really busy, uh, but we're always putting videos up, obviously, every single day. But we try to do these every Thursday. Tomorrow, just so you know, we've got a really cool video going up, haven't we, Michael? We do. Um, just so you guys know, last year, or about a year and a half ago, actually, now, I did a Watson Craig's close-up case. And it was a really popular video, and I literally just broke down what was in my close-up case. Well, tomorrow, we've got a What's in Craig's close-up case, 2024 edition, where I literally just break down what's in my case at the moment, what I'm taking to gigs, what I'm doing. And uh, you can have a look at that. That's going up tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we've got some great content over the weekend. Uh, but let me know what you think of this trick down below. I will see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Craig, Michael behind the camera. This is Magic TV, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.